so I've been a server for a while now, and sometimes when I'm tying the strings to my server apron, I think about a quote from author Sherman Alexi. The world is divided into two tribes, those who are buttheads and those who are not. Now, most of the people I meet are absolutely lovely, but I do meet a lot of buttheads at work, and I've done a lot of things to make myself cope with them. One, I smile and laugh incessantly often with the sincerity of blinking. I also try to come off as like a grown, strong man, but I also try to let people know that I'm willing to cry if they're mean to me, just to embarrass them in front of their table. And lastly, I keep a photo of an adorable puppy, and the caption says, do you want to have a threesome? And I keep this and I stare at it when people talk to me about their imaginary gluten allergies or try to order a skinny margarita. But, you know, every job forces you to deal with people you don't want to. You know, I am very uh, comfortable making angry people feel better. I'm very patient with people who think that menus are just a blueprint for the creative dishes they would like to create. And lastly, I understand and I try to stop myself from slapping people who turn and look at me and say, I've already ate. That's never that much fun. But sometimes I am still surprised by people. She was a red-headed woman at a tube top. And I walked over and she looked up at me and said, Oh, you are very tall for a Chinese person. Oh, that's fine. I'm not even Chinese. And she said, oh, But admit it, you are tall for a Chinese person. Now, I love this story because she's so wrong, but she is also so right. At five foot eight, I am two inches taller than the average Chinese man. I Googled that. But my family is from Thailand, which is not the same as China, which is not the same as Asia. These are facts that I think would have blown this woman's mind. But I know that she was trying to compliment me, and to be honest, it's just it's just easier to be nice than it is to be mean. So I laughed and went on with my day. But that is not always easy to do. This burger has cheese and I'm lactose intolerant. Oh, I'm so sorry, sir. I can get you another burger in just a few minutes. I don't care if you're sorry. I don't care if you crawl across this floor and beg me for my forgiveness. I am lactose intolerant and if I have cheese, I will have gas all day. You people ruin everything. You people have ruined this country. Rich people are such petty drama queens. And the term you people, it's just a term no one needs to use anymore. It's a, like a racist dog whistle that everybody can hear. And like, I admit, I messed up this man's order. I admit. When he said ch no cheese, I heard cheddar please. Because when you're like a belligerent businessman and you order a $15 hamburger instead of a $60 steak, I might stop caring about you. But I can't admit to knowing how many you peoples have ruined his order, nonetheless his country. I mean, have that many Asian people really tried to force feed this man cheese? <laughs> Or is it my gay fabulousness that he was referring to? I think if you're going to be a butthole head, butthead, you should have to be specific. Fight or flight. These are the times when you want to prove your dignity. I wanted to take this hamburger and like mash it into his face. But because my paychecks are cute, I chose flight. And also, no one man is going to stop me from attending the sales at TJ Maxx. So I went to the kitchen, I started a new burger, and then I had my manager take it out so I didn't have to talk to him anymore. And that wasn't as satisfying as throwing the burger into his face, but every job makes you swallow your pride every now and again. And as the evening went on, I told my co-workers about the story and I started to feel better. And we did what we always do with horrible people. We walk by your tables and fart constantly. <laughs> but you know what would have been better than farting at this table? It would have been nice if someone at the table had said, Hey Joe, or Chad, or Brad, whatever his name was, Hey, stop being a butthead over a burger. Or, 
They could have done something subtle like tapped him on his knee, looked him in the eye, and said, bad white person. You're being a bad, bad white person right now. You see, on the rare occasions that someone has said you people to me, it feels like I'm starring in a civil rights movie on the Lifetime Network. <laughs> but when nobody else in the room notices, it feels like the Twilight Zone. I like to think that because of my experience and wit, I can handle any situation at work. But you know, that you people comment kind of shook me for a moment, but it, I don't think it was the words. I think it was this man's anger. Like, how do you get that angry over a hamburger to conflate it with racism? Like, that is a big leap. And I started to worry about his life. Like, what happens when the candy gets stuck in the vending machine? Does he go postal? <laughs> what happens when he's doing number two and realizes there's no more toilet paper? Who are the you people then? <laughs> I don't think the world is actually divided into buttheads and others. I think our lives are divided into times of being a butthead and choosing not to be a butthead. You know, in this world right now, it is so much easier to be mean and cruel. It's actually a bigger challenge to be kind. And it's always easy to sit back and watch bad stuff happen and apologize later. But it's much harder to stand up for the things you believe in and stand up for those who can't defend themselves. Now, I admit, I, I can be a butthead at any moment. And when I find myself being a butthead, I like to think of the reason that God made butts. You know, they're these tight little holes that carry a lot of poop. So if I find myself being a butthead, I think, what are they supposed to do? Well, buttholes are supposed to relax and let it all go. Thank you very much.